It's NAB 2019 and we actually have a working copy of the new Sharp 8K affordable camera. The last time we saw this camera was at CES and this thing wasn't even working. So in just a couple of months, Sharp has actually created a camera that is functional. It does have a lot of quirks to it, but this is a prototype that is working. So we know that Sharp is actually going to deliver on this thing. So let's talk about the confirmed specs of the new Sharp 8K camera. You can shoot at up to 8K at 30 frames per second. You're also able to shoot at 25 and 24 frames per second in 8K. And the incredible thing about this camera is the fact that you can shoot 8K internally on an SD card. It's unbelievable that they're able to make this processing happen internally. It's shooting in H.264 at 8-bit 420, and it will eventually shoot 10-bit at 420 as well in 8K. At least that's what they told me. Today we're only testing 8K at 8-bit 420, but hopefully soon we'll see the 10-bit. But again, this is just a prototype. By no means is this a functioning, like, shippable camera, because there's a ton of bugs with this thing. Let's talk about some of the other frame rates. You can shoot at 4K at 60 frames per second, and unfortunately 60 frames per second is also the maximum at 1080p. There's no 120 frames per second. That's because the sensor is not able to read out fast enough to do 120p. And while we're on the top of sensor, Sharp has designed a completely new sensor. This is not a Panasonic sensor, this is not an Olympus sensor, this is not a Sony sensor, it's a Sharp 33 megapixel micro four thirds sensor and no other camera has this sensor right now. Unfortunately, there is no IBIS or stabilization on the sensor that is confirmed. They will not ship this camera with IBIS. So it's a locked sensor, unfortunately. But surprisingly, the rolling shutter performance isn't as bad as I thought. I mean, I figured 8K on a camera of this size would be with Jello City. But believe it or not, I think the A6400 in 4K has a little bit more rolling shutter than this camera has at 8K. Obviously, one of the biggest things that stands out with this camera is this massive 5.5 inch touchscreen that is incredible to use. I wish every single camera would make a screen this big. I cannot believe they were able to do this. But I mean, Sharp makes TVs, so I guess it makes sense. The touchscreen functions just like a phone would, and I really like the interface. It's actually really simple, straightforward, and easy to use. I'm also able to focus manually without even the need of focus peaking, which they said will be implemented in the final version. While while we're on the topic of focus, I'm not really able to show any type of autofocus system with this camera. There is kind of a weird implementation of it, but it really sucks. So Sharp advised me to shoot in manual focus mode, and that's what I've been doing during this test. They did tell me, however, that they will do a tracking continuous autofocus system with this camera in the future, so we'll have to test that out. I don't anticipate it being any better than like a GH5, to be honest. As you can see, the size of this thing is really incredible, and you would think that the battery life would be really bad, but I'm actually finding the battery life to be pretty good. And it's actually a little surprising because it uses these small little Canon LPE6 batteries that you just cannot get rid of. Every freaking thing that you can think of uses these batteries. So it's a good thing that I have a whole bunch back from the 5D days. Inside this tray here is where your SD card goes and you do want to be using a fast UHS-2 speed card. I mean, we're shooting 8K for goodness sake. So you really need a fast card to record that footage. On the side here, we also have some great IO, as they say. I don't know what that stands for, but I know that's the term. On the left-hand side of the camera, on the bottom, we have a mini XLR jack, which is really professional, really nice to see. We also have a USB-C slot and a mini HDMI port, but they told me they're gonna actually replace that mini HDMI port for a full HDMI, which is a welcome addition. And on top of the camera, we have an eighth inch mic input and the standard headphone jack. So all the professional connections that you would really want, they said they're gonna try to allow charging through USB while you're using it. They don't know for sure yet, but they will definitely allow charging when the camera is turned off through the USB-C port. One thing that was a welcome surprise with this camera is the color science. The skin tones look good and the overall dynamic range is decent. Now that's one thing that we're not able to really test with this camera. There's only one picture profile right now and it's kind of a crunchy standard profile. There's no log on this camera, unfortunately, and Sharp told us that they're definitely gonna implement a log recording mode on this camera later. I was also very surprised with the ISO performance of this camera. It's really just as good as any other camera that I've seen, like a GH5S or an A6300. 
and I would have no hesitation to shoot around 1600 for most cases in low light. However, you could crank it to 6400 and maybe a little denoiser and 8K will uh, just cause a little bit of processing that'll take a couple hours. That's the big problem with this camera is yes, you can shoot 8K, but is it really practical and is it something that you wanna do? 4K has finally got to a point where it's easy to handle and we're able to edit in 4K. I can't really imagine doing an 8K workflow. I love this camera, I love the size, I love the color, I love this giant flip screen thing, but honestly, 8K is kinda ridiculous. And the problem that I'm having with it is in order for us to edit this thing, we literally have to transcode everything to proxy and it takes forever. If you have a beefy computer like an iMac Pro, you could pull it into Final Cut apparently and edit natively. I haven't tried this, I'm gonna try it at the Sharp booth, I'll let you know. I know that Premiere allows this too, but it's really kind of a workflow issue right now with the 8K because this is so forward thinking. And I think that's really the thing with this camera is it's really a forward thinking camera. I don't really think this is super practical for everybody as awesome as this camera is. And believe me, we are definitely gonna review this thing when it's actually shipping and who knows when that's gonna be by the way. Even though this camera is potentially unconfirmed under $5,000 around that $3,000 price point, this camera really is not for everyone. I see this camera as more of a tool for people who want 4K deliveries with extra cropping room. I don't really think there's a need for delivering in 8K yet. I mean, most people still don't even upload in 4K on YouTube. But having the ability to shoot at a rather wide or medium focal length and cropping in in post-production and staying native to 4K makes this a valuable tool for somebody who needs that one kind of practical use case. And I don't wanna put this camera down because I'm actually very excited that Sharp is doing this. I mean, first off, Sharp came out of nowhere and created this camera, and I think it's gonna really shake up the industry and push everybody forward. I'm excited about AK, I think there's a practical use for it, but right now, this is just a prototype. What do you guys think about this 8K camera? Is it practical? Do you want one? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you're new here, welcome to Las Vegas. Welcome to Kinetica. Hit that subscribe button, enable bell notifications so that you know exactly when our next video comes out.